Hi there. Today, you're going to learn how to play Sabotage. Sabotage is a board game for two to four players, facing off as two teams, the spies and the villains. The spies want to sneak through the villains' volcano fortress and hack their doomsday machines. They win if they hack the doomsday machines eight times in total. The villains want to defend their doomsday machines and kill the spies. They win if they hit the spies five times in total. First, set up the game as described on page one of the rulebook. Normally a screen separates the two teams, but for this walkthrough, we'll remove it so you can see everything that's going on. Now, let's start playing. Each round of play has four parts. Rolling dice, planning actions, executing actions, and cleaning up. Let's start with rolling dice. Any one player, doesn't matter who, rolls all four of their dice. Looks like we got a 1, a 3, a 4, and a 6. Everyone else turns their own dice to match. Next up, everyone plans their actions at the same time. To plan your actions, place action tiles on the bottom slots of your player board, in the order you want to execute them from left to right. Don't worry about filling up all four slots, you don't have to. Most of the time, an action will need you to place one or more dice to use it. For example, this hack action says that it needs one die showing a 5 or a 6. You'll need to place just one die on this action. For example, you couldn't place a 3 and a 2 to add up to 5. But here's a second example. This freeze ray says that it needs a sum of 7. So for this action, you can place multiple dice. In fact, you can place as many dice as you want, as long as it adds up to exactly 7. Otherwise, an action can say it needs a die with a specific number instead of a range. Or, if it says pair, it needs two dice with matching numbers. Finally, if it says free, it doesn't need any dice. But here's something important. Even though you rolled four dice, you can only place two dice on actions. As you play the game, you'll get to place more dice. We'll talk about that later. After everyone is done planning, the villains execute their actions. Either villain can go first. Once both villains have executed their actions, the spies will do the same. So let's take a look at the actions everyone planned. The first villain, Nadesh, planned move and then generator. She put the four on the move action, showing she plans to move up, and she put the three on the generator action. So she moves to room J, then puts one blue cube on the generator there. See the no symbol on the left side of those action tiles? That means Nadesh doesn't say a word about using move or generator. Nothing. Nada. Zilch. The second villain, Chantiko, planned the exact same turn. She moves to room J, then puts a blue cube on the generator there. This generator now has two cubes, so it turns on. This is great for the villains. Each active generator lets them place one more die each round. One more thing. See the walls between rooms? You can't move through them. Now, let's move on to the spies. The spies start the game off the map, so first they'll need to parachute in. How very sneaky. The first spy, the acrobat, planned parachute and move and scan. Parachute is a free action, so it doesn't require any dice. He also marks which room he plans to enter, room L. Like the villains, he must place the die showing the direction he plans to move. This turn, he plans to move down. But first, let's take a look at the speech bubble on the left side of Parachute. See how it says name? This means that the acrobat must say Parachute out loud. Parachute lets you enter any room you want, but you have to say which half of the map you're entering. So, the acrobat places his figure in room L. He could say he entered either bottom or right, so he says right. After parachuting in, the acrobat uses move and scan. He moves down to room P, then he has to scan. Here's how scanning works. First, declare a row, a column, or a colored quadrant. When you use move and scan, you must be in the row, column, or quadrant you're scanning. So the acrobat is in room P, and he says he scans column D. Neither villain is in that column, so the villains say, No one's there! Better luck next time, spies! Also, the villains now know the acrobat is somewhere in column D. The second spy, 
The hacker planned parachute, move and scan, and earpiece. He parachutes into room M, suspecting that a villain might be near the generator in room J. He moves up to room I and then scans the lower left green quadrant. Smart. The villains say that both Nadesh and Chantico are in room J. As a reward, each spy gains two unlock markers, one for each villain revealed by the scan. Don't worry about what unlock markers do, we'll get to that later. This scan does a couple more things. The villains must reveal how many cubes the generator in room J has. Two cubes. Also, if the villains had placed any device tokens in the scanned column, they would have to reveal them. Finally, the hacker uses earpiece. This is a pretty sneaky action. It lets you move your teammate to an adjacent room without a scan. The hacker says, earpiece, and the acrobat chooses to move left to room O. Everyone is done executing actions, so it's time to clean up. Each player takes back their action tiles and dice, and they must spend any unlock markers they have. Again, we'll talk about those later. So, what other actions could the players have taken? Well, both villains start with motion detector and stun gun. The motion detector works a little like scanning. You declare a row, a column, or a quadrant, but the spies only tell you the number of spies in that area. That's all you get. They do not say which rooms they are in or who is there. The stun gun lets you attack an adjacent room and, if you're lucky, hit a spy there. Remember how you can't move through walls? Well, you can't attack through walls either. If you do hit a spy, the spy is removed from the map immediately. They won't get to do their actions this turn, and they'll need to use Parachute next round to get back on the map. Also, if the spies have placed any device tokens in the room you attacked, they get revealed and removed. Now, let's talk about the spy's remaining action, Hack. Basically, it lets you mess up the villain's stuff in your room. If there's a doomsday machine in your room, remove one red cube and give it to the villains. You're one step closer to winning. If there's a generator in your room, tell the villains to remove one of their blue cubes from it. If it was active, it turns off. Also, if the villains have placed any device tokens in the room you attacked, they get revealed and removed. Alrighty, just a few topics left. First, let's talk about winning. Everybody loves winning. As a reminder, the spies win if they hack the doomsday machines eight times in total, and the villains win if they hit the spies five times in total. Each time the spies hack a doomsday machine, they also take a yellow cube from the longer track on top of the screen and give it to the villains. These yellow cubes are called modify cubes, and here's how you use them. At any time when you're planning actions, you can spend a modify cube to increase or decrease one of your dice by one. Yes, you can turn a six into a one or a one into a six. An easy way to mark this is to place the modify cube by the die you're changing. Each time the villains hit a spy, they take a yellow modify cube and a green cube from the shorter track on top of the screen and give them to the spies. The green cubes are called slide cubes, and here's how you use them. Before or after you execute any action, you can spend a slide cube to move. It doesn't take an action space, you don't have to plan it, and you don't have to say a thing. It's the best, basically, so spend them wisely. So, we've been waiting to talk about unlock markers for a while now. Let's fix that. As a refresher, whenever a spy reveals a villain by scanning, each spy gains an unlock marker. No, you can't double dip on unlocks by revealing the same villain multiple times in the same round. First, let's talk about the spies. When you get an unlock, you can place it either on your swagger track or on your actions unlock track. Your swagger will let you place more dice each round, as shown on the track, and filling an actions unlock tier at the top lets you unlock a new action. But be warned, you can lose swagger if a villain reveals you using a flashlight or other actions, so watch out. Now for the villains. As a villain, rather than placing a die to plan an action, you can place it on the matching die space on your player board. Take the unlock marker and put it on your actions track at the top. You've got no swagger track. After all, you don't like showing off, except when you're destroying the world. Whenever you fill up all the spaces of an action tier, you unlock one action from that tier. Take both action tiles there and pick the one you like. You get the action you chose for the rest of the game, but you'll never get the other action. As you unlock more actions, you'll find some new types to play with. 
Passive actions give you an effect that's always active and doesn't fill action slots. And build actions let you place device tokens with unique effects. But, as we mentioned earlier, make sure to keep your device tokens safe. They can get removed by villains attacks and spies hacks. To finish up, here are a few strategy tips. Spies? Scanning is extremely important, but using move and scan is a double-edged sword. You're forced to scan, and you give away information about where you are. To mix things up, use earpiece to move your teammate. Once you get the thermo, use it too. It lets you scan anywhere, not just where you are. These actions will throw off the villain's idea of your location. Villains, make sure you don't delay in unlocking new actions. Many of them affect multiple rooms at the same time. As you might guess, these actions don't go through walls unless they say so. But sometimes, you can just blow up those walls. Everyone, as you gain information about where your enemies are, or might be, track them on the map using the glass beads. Especially you villains, as you track one scan to the next, you can get a lot of info about where the spies likely are. Learning to deduce is key to becoming a super villain. And that's Sabotage. We hope you enjoyed.